sound mind. Take note of that. The spirit of a sound mind. That's the way we should read that. Then the other scripture, also the second foundational scripture, will be in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23. Ephesians 4, verse 23. And it says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in this. Also mark that word again. Spirit of your mind. So if you look up the meaning of soundness in the dictionary. This is what it says. The state of being in good condition. Now, as believers, everything that we do has to be of the spirit. So if we're talking about being in good condition, we have to talk about our spirit, soul, and body. Yes, now, if you, didn't know, if you didn't know this until now, I'm going to tell you, you are a spirit yes, living in a body. Really? Everybody say that. You are a spirit, yes, spirit. Spirit. spirit living in a body. Living in a body. So I have a very lovely wife, you know, she's beautiful, after four children. But we spend a lot of time taking care of the physical body, right? Mm. But I tell you what, the real you is the spirit. Yes, sir. So when we talk about soundness, we're really talking about soundness in the spirit. Yes, sir. All right. So when we're saying that the state of being in good condition is the state of being of your spirit. What is the state of your spirit? Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about. And that's why I was emphasizing when it says the spirit of the mind. God has given us a spirit of a sound mind. I'm going to ask this question if you don't know it. Where is your mind? When you say mind, where is your mind? Just write that down. Where is your mind? Well, scientists, there's a lady that I follow. Her, her name is Dr. Carolyn Leaf. She's uh, originally from South, Carolina, uh, from South Africa. She's proven to us that the mind is different from the brain. So when you hear the word mind, don't mistake it for the brain. The brain is the physical, but the mind talks of the spirit. So the soundness that we're going to be talking about this morning will deal with the spiritual. You know, you are a spirit, not a body, right? It's okay to take care of the body, right? But the spirit is much more important. Now the definition, I gave you the dictionary definition of soundness, but the, 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 the definition that we're going to go by this morning that applies to us, because we have to focus more on the spirit, is soundness is oneness with God. Yes. If you're going to write that, write it down. Soundness is oneness with God. So if you're talking about soundness in the spirit, soul, in the body, you can't talk about soundness without talking about oneness with God. And what does that mean? We'll, we'll, we'll explain this some, some more. But to get a little bit of understanding, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17. It talks a little bit about oneness with Christ. And that gives us a little bit of understanding of what I'm going to be talking about today. 1 Corinthians 6 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is what? Are we there? First Corinthians 6, 17. Let's read it together. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Hallelujah. So when we talk about soundness, this morning we're talking about oneness with God. Beloved, that's the key to life. Oneness with God, your relationship with God. And that's why I'm, I want you to get it into your mind. You are a spirit, not a body. You are a spirit. You live in a body. You have to feed that spirit. You have to make sure that that spirit is healthy before you can talk about soundness. So this morning, I don't want to take too much of our time, but I want to talk about three keys to being one with God. So if, if, if we're talking about soundness, is oneness with God, right? Being joined to the Lord. What are the three keys that I want us to pay attention to this morning? You will be blessed. The first of all, 
the first one, the first point is salvation. So in other words, if you are not even born again, you can't even claim oneness with God. You can't claim soundness with God. Now, it's so amazing that we live in a world that is so materialistic. We look at success in terms of money only. Most of the time, even believers, we are all guilty of that, right? But, I tell you, if you are not saved, you don't, you don't have oneness with God. Something is missing. Go to John chapter 3, verse 3. That's a very popular scripture. I'm sure the kids can even quote that. It says, Verily, verily, I say, where Jesus answered and said to Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So, this is a popular scripture. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And if you are not born again, you can't be one with God. You can't even begin to start talking about soundness. No matter how much money you have, if you don't have Christ, I'm sorry to, <laughs> to tell you, you are missing something in your life. And there will be an opportunity later on today if you are not saved. Because coming to church is not, is not being saved. You can be in church and you are not saved. Matter of fact, if you, if you read John chapter 3, Jesus was talking about being born again to a religious leader of that time. Who didn't even have a clue what Christ was talking about. So it's not, it's not coming to church. You have to have an encounter with, with God. In a new way, your life has to be changed. Yes, sir. At some point, if, if I talk to different people here, at some point they've done that in their life, that they had a point where they encountered Jesus. For me, it was an encounter with a tape that changed my life when I was in high school. And I listened to a tape by Pastor Kumi, a very popular minister where we we're from in Nigeria. And that tape changed my life. And I cried like a baby. And this was like, I was in uh, like 1985, there about. And I made up my mind. I said I was going back to school and my life was going to be different. As God will have it, my best friend at that time got saved in the same period. We went back to school and we started preaching all over. So I, my point is, everybody has to have that day, that point in your life where you come in contact with God. So, so salvation is the first point. If you are not saved, you can't even begin to talk about soundness, about, you know, about, about oneness with God. Something that happened where I work. A 33-year-old boy, I don't want to scare anybody, I will show you his picture and see how good looking this guy is. He killed himself. And you know why he killed himself? Because his girlfriend broke up with him. This is a very handsome guy good career. I work for a university. This guy, you know, they're very smart. One day they just found him dead in the park. Somebody was telling me that he had been depressed for a while, but I, I just didn't pay attention to it. A colleague, another colleague of mine was telling me that something's wrong with him. One day we just came to work and he said that he was dead Jesus. because his girlfriend mm. broke up with him. Jesus. So that would tell you that what we're talking I'm sure he, he had money, right? I'm sure he's okay, he's comfortable, but something was missing in his life. So it, that's, a, that's where we begin from. Oneness with God, you have to know God. You have to have Christ in your life. You have to be saved. You have to be born again. That I cannot overemphasize that. The second point that I want to stress this morning is the fear of God. Once you are saved, to walk with God, you have to have the fear of God. What is the fear of God? It's so simple. Obeying God. There's so many things that we know we're not supposed to do that we do as believers. You can't be sound, you can't be one with God if you don't have the fear of God. There's a scripture in Proverbs that says that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. I think that's in Proverbs 1 uh Okay, Proverbs 1, verse 7. It says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So, the fear of God is the second thing. 
To be one with God, you have to walk in the fear of God. Now, the third point, which I want to I want to dwell a little bit on, and I'll tell you why I'm dwelling on this a little bit. The third point that I want to make this morning that would help you in being one with God. The first one, you have to be saved. Second one, you have to have the fear of God in your life. Everything you do, the fear of God has to guide you. The third one is being planted in the house of God. And I'm going to dwell on this a little bit. Because I have a story that will bless you. And you see why I'm, I'm, I'm dwelling on this one. Being planted in the house of God. The scripture says that those that are planted in the house of God shall flourish. Right? Have you heard that scripture before? Those that are planted in the house of God shall flourish, right? Yes. Some time ago, the pastor of this house and myself, we used to be a part of another redeemed church. I won't mention the name. I remember I used to say, um, I used to tell one of the trustees of, of that church, I was like, is it, because we used to, I used to work with him in this, in, in this company, and I would tell him, I said, is it just me or the pastor of this house has a gift upon his life and nobody can see it. Why is it taking, it taking them so long to send him forth to go and plant a church? I, used to, I was talking to another friend about him, I used to say. Because the very first time that I met him, I just saw the Spirit of God on his life. I remember one time we were going to go, my sister said uh, I should help him find musicians. So, and he, she was going to pay them. And this was in Louisville, Kentucky. So I got the keyboard player, I got somebody to sing, I needed a drummer. So I talked to him, I said, are you going to go come with us? We have to go to Kentucky and they're paying. You know what he told me? He said he, he, he couldn't go with me. And you know why? Because he had to be in church. Mm, okay. Because nobody was going to play the keyboard in church that day. And he had to be in church and he wouldn't go with me. So he turned down the money so that he could be in church. So that's what I'm talking about. Being planted in church. What we are seeing today, him being a pastor here, is something that... It, it didn't just start today. This is something that, this is the way he has lived his life all this morning. Being planted in church, being dedicated in church, whatever needs to be done in church is there. The way he's passionately, you know, you know, pastoring this church, that's the way he's always been. And that's the key. That's, a, that's an important key in life to soundness. Being planted in church. Being planted in church. Find a good church where you are planted, where you are working, whatever needs to be done, you are serving there. The blessing is going to come forth from there. Amen. I'll tell you a personal story. A few years ago, this was way before I, I was married, I was going through a very tough time. I lost my job. I was living in South Carolina then. I lost my job, and my sister was living in New Jersey then. She was like, why don't you maybe move to a different state? Maybe things will be different. So I moved to New Jersey, living with my sister. So I left. I had my own place in South Carolina, you know, big duplex that I was living. I could do anything I want. Now I'm forced to go out to live with my sister and her husband. I got two sisters that are medical doctors. This particular one was also going through a hard time then. She was a medical doctor, but she wasn't... She was still in the process of finishing her residency, so it was a tough time for them. And they had four, I think at that time they had three kids. Now they have four. But the husband was a banker and also uh, a pastor of a church. And see, please bear with me, listen to this story. It's going to bless your life. So I went there thinking that, okay, well, they helped me out. I'm looking for a place to stay, I'm living with them. I'm going through a tough time and I'm just living with them. I was helping them out. I have to change diapers once in a while just to help them out. You know, the church that the, we were living in Jersey, the church was in New York. We'll go pack all the instruments, go to New York every time, twice a week. We used to do that through the traffic because the church was in New York. But I didn't get it. I didn't know that God was using me to build the ministry. 
right? So at that time, I was looking for a job. But listen, things started to turn around for me. I got a job with a, with, a, with a pharmaceutical company without even interviewing. They called me on the phone and gave me a job, right? Things started happening. Things were turning around. I was feeling myself. I thought, I didn't get it then, that part of the blessings that was coming my way was because I was being planted in the house of God. But I didn't get it, right? You know what happened? The devil, I, I wouldn't say the devil. The devil made me see that, but your, your sister, she's struggling. And I felt very bad for her. She was struggling. She was a medical doctor at the time, but she hadn't finished. And every time I saw them, even though I was being of help to them, I was just, I, I just didn't, I didn't feel comfortable. So I left the church. Did you get it? I left because I didn't want to watch my sister go through and I, in my mind, I was blaming my brother-in-law that why, why is he making my sister go through this? And she's a doctor. I missed the point. The point was I was there to be a blessing to them, to help them build their ministry. And I was getting a blessing as a result of that. It wasn't because I was smart. I mean, I got the job with Pfizer over the phone just in a couple of minutes. I'm thinking maybe because I was praying. No, but I was a part of a ministry at the time that I was being a blessing. I was being planted into the church. And I should have stayed there, but I left. I didn't get it because of what my sister was going through. So much later in life, and I'm, I'm not going to tell you, I'm not wasting too much of the time, but I missed out a lot of opportunities because I left that church, right? Thinking that my brother-in-law was being being mean to my sister. She's making her go through this stuff, trying to build this church. I should have been there, helping them build. The church is still there today, doing strong. And my brother-in-law is not even there anymore. He's moved somewhere else, planting the church in a different city. But it wasn't about him, because it wasn't even in his church. It's about serving. It's about being planted in church. Brethren, if you want to be sound, you have to be planted. And I'm saying this to encourage everybody that is here. If you're a part of this ministry, don't care what you have been told to do. There's a blessing that comes from being planted in the house of God. I can tell you that. At that time, I was so I was doing so well. So if I got married, I went somewhere and I was trying to think about you know getting married. I was praying about getting married, and this minister said, "Give a thousand dollars." I was you know I was doing what well. I gave a thousand dollars without even thinking about it. But I left that church where God had placed me to be a blessing to the family and, and be a blessing to the church. I was a music director there, but I left. So I'm encouraging you, you know, don't, don't do like I did, right? If you're part of this church, you're not doing it for PDJ, like you call him, Pastor Deji. You're not doing it for him. You are doing it for yourself, actually, for God and for yourself. And that's what I didn't get there. It wasn't about me. Well, it was about me because God was setting me up for a blessing. But it wasn't about my brother-in-law and my sister, right? So if, you, if you're a part of this ministry, serve God. If you want to be sound, be planted here. Be planted here. Do what, what you can to support the man of God here you and, and his wife. Do what you can to support what is going on here. Look at the concert that we had last week. That was a powerful concert. That was, that was so powerful, so awesome, right? And I have a, I have a prophecy for this house, actually. And I, I said what I said about you uh, being a pastor, that I said, I was telling another guy that, you won't think you're going to be a, you're gonna be a pastor. It's good. That can't they see that he has a gift of God in his life to, be, to, to have a church? And nobody saw it then. This house, something's going to hit New Jersey. There's a storm that is about to hit New Jersey. There's a storm that is about to hit this nation. And it's called House of Faith. Amen. You didn't get it. If you get it, you should have said a lot of amen. What I saw last week at that concert that we had, the anointing that was here in that concert, I'm telling you that this, this church is going places. This church is going places. And I just want to encourage you. 
Don't miss out of the blessing that is on this house. Don't miss out. We're talking about, I'm still talking about soundness now. You know, I'm not, I'm not being distracted. I want you to be planted. If you are part of this ministry, you are not doing it for PDJ. You are doing it for God and for yourself. Key into what's going on here. There's a blessing that comes from that. There's a blessing that comes from it. After I left my sister's church, I, I, I enjoyed the blessing in a while, all the money that was going on, and they almost canceled my contract with Pfizer. Hmm. Then I woke up again. <laughs> then I realized that I've been, ble I've been blessed because I was a part of that ministry, right? So don't, 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 don't do that. God has a reason for everything, why he does things. People, everybody, all the people that are going to fill this seats, God already knows them, right? Amen. You are here for a reason. Serve God. Serve God. Serve God. Serve God. Serve your pastor. Serve your church, you know. And there's a blessing that comes from that. And I just want to encourage us this morning, you know, that to really be sound, those three things are the things that the Lord laid upon my heart. If you are not saved, I'll give you an opportunity to dedicate your heart to to give your life to Christ this morning. You can't be sound in anything that you do in life if you are not saved. You just find that something is missing. Even if you have all the money in the world, you just know that something, you, you feel empty. So you need to give your life to Christ. The second is, you could be saved, but you're not walking in the fear of God. You're also missing it. You need the fear of God in your life. And if you are walking in the fear of the Lord, but... Uh, you are not planted in the church because there are some people there. If you call them, what church do you go to? They don't have one. They go from church, from one church to the other, from one church to the other. And I'm telling you, I'm not bragging, but I was born in a church. I've seen pastors, I've seen churches. I think I was telling my wife, there's a big church in Nigeria. Uh, uh, it's called House on the Rock. When the men started that church, I was one of the people that played the bass in his dad's house. And I didn't hear yours. Paul Andy Farrison. I played the big, he didn't have a building then. We were playing bass. I played the bass at the night video when he was starting. But I saw something in him. And I knew that that church was still going to be big. His dad was uh, Justice Andy Farrison at the time. And it was in his parents' bedroom. Well, that's where we had the first night video. I see, I've seen churches. And I've seen churches that will start small, right? And you see the greatness in them. And I've seen the ones that when they start, they, 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 they're too worried about other churches and condemning other churches. And you can see how they're going to end. But I see something great about House of Faith. Amen. And I'm not just telling you, this church is going places. Amen. This church is going places. Amen. Key into it. What's going on here? And it's, it's going to be, it's going to pay you, pay off for you ultimately. Like I said, if you are not give your, giving your life to Christ, we're going to give you an opportunity to do so today. Uh, shall we close our eyes? I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how successful you are in life. If you don't have Christ, it doesn't mean much. If you have never given your life to Christ, this is an opportunity folks. That guy that I saw on my job, I saw him one day, the next minute he was dead. And I thought, I wish I had taken time to share Christ with him. If you are in this building, in this house this morning, and you've never confessed Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we're not trying to embarrass you. We're just telling you matters of the faith, things that will change your life forever. Can you signify by raising your hand? I will just say a small prayer with you this morning and you'll be born again. It's, it's very easy. So I want to give you that opportunity if there's anybody in the building, even if you're a little child, you know, some people have given their lives as a kid at, at four or five years old. If their lives have been changed forever. So we, we, we we're creating this opportunity right now, giving the opportunity. Maybe you've been coming to church, but you've never really committed your life to God. 
and give you the opportunity. Can you signify by raising up your hand if you want to dedicate your life? Thank God for that hand. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else that want to give their life to Christ? This is what it's all about. It's not just church. The reason why the church is here is so that we can bring souls into the kingdom. That's what it's all about. Thank God for that hand. Thank God for that. Is there any other person? Any other person? Any other person? Doesn't matter. It could be a kid. Are you raising up your hand? Can you rise up? Can you rise up? Can you give him a hand? Any other person? Please don't be shy. This is serious. This is serious. If you've never given your life to Christ and you want to do so today, please signify and raise up by raising up your hands. And I'm going to have the pastor of the house to lead you on the salvation, on the prayer of salvation today. Yes, it is. Can you please come forward, please? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Himself to them. 
that these ones will not fail, that they will not fall, that they will not falter, that they will not backslide, that the blood of Jesus will speak for them in the name of Jesus, that God will perfect all that concerns them, that God will perfect their lives, that the encounter of a new birth will be their portion in the name of Jesus, that as they begin to open the Bibles, God himself will himself show them things that no man can show them from the Bible in the name of Jesus that they will grow from strength to strength from favor to favor in the name of Jesus we agree as a church that God will make them generals in his kingdom in the name of Jesus we agree as a church that God will make them a voice in this generation in the name of Jesus we agree as a church that by God they will move mountains. By God they will win a lot of people to Jesus. In the name of Jesus. When the trumpet sounds we will see them in heaven. In the name of Jesus. Father we thank you for what you've done today. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus mighty name. Congratulations. Welcome to the house of God. To the house of faith. Congratulations. Let's give them a big hand as they take their seats. After service, I want to personally meet with you to share some things with you. And we give the Lord a big hand for that. I'm almost done, but I just feel like the pastor needs to pray for a group of people as well. And I'm done. You see, the enemy is a very is a trickster. He won't just tell you, leave this church. Right? It starts with discouragement. It didn't just happen. I didn't just leave. Matter of fact, that church that I'm talking about that I left is called House of Prayer. It's still there today. But it was just like I was looking at my sister. I was like, why is she going through this tough time? Now, the person that I was concerned for is doing so well now. He's doing way better than then. But somehow the devil used that to get me out of the church. So I want pastor to pray. You don't have to raise up your hands, but I want the pastor to pray over people. Are there people that are discouraged? Because sometimes you want to serve God, but there's just so much in your life that the enemy uses as a baggage to draw you back. So God, you know, God is, I want us to pray for that group of people. That anybody that is meant to be here, that the enemy will not draw them away. And if he's already trying to, 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 to deceive them into leaving, that, they, that God will expose the lives of the enemy, they will remain in church, you know, and they will keep on serving so that they can get their blessings. You don't have to raise up your hands, you know, but, you know, and that's also what I just felt in my spirit. That the pastor should pray over people, pray over his congregation, and to pray that nobody that is discouraged, no matter what they're going through, that God will deliver them so that they can serve God. God said concerning the children of Israel, He said, Let my people go so that they can serve me. If there's anybody that is here that really wants to serve God, but there's just so much baggage in their life that the enemy is using to discourage them, to bring them down. That as the man of God prays today, that body will be lifted. Amen. That body will be lifted. Amen. And they can serve God in freedom. Thank you. Thank you.